Hello there! Welcome back to the second installment of my Rome research series, where I lead you all through my workflow and take you through my process of discovering the beauties of this amazing app. Today, I'm going to introduce one of the main advertising points of Rome, which is its ability to expand your thoughts for research. This whole experience is hopefully going to be very eye-opening for me, and I am excited to see if I can truly find out more about the powerful features of Rome. Whether you're an experienced Rome user or a complete beginner, I'd love to have you join me in this video and give me some pointers on how I could improve my workflow or how I was able to give you some fresh ideas. If you haven't seen my first video of the series going through my daily planning routine on Rome to create a daily schedule, please click on the little eye that pops up on the screen right now or you can check the link in the description. And you definitely don't wanna miss that one because it'll basically lay down the groundwork that I've created for this video that you're about to watch right now. All right, so today we're going to be diving into a bit of extended research for some topics that I've been studying in environmental chemistry and a little bit about a relevant subject. I'm not sure if you're all aware, but there's currently this virus going around called COVID-19, so I'm going to be looking a little bit into that as well from an environmental perspective. Again, all of this is just research that I'm doing on my own outside of class, so this isn't directly related to my coursework in university. I'm going to be going through multiple different scientific journals and articles, and I'll be taking you through my entire process explaining everything along the way. So first, I'm going to be implementing this into my daily plan for today, which will give me a quick idea of when I found this information so that I can look back at it in the future. Now we're going to go directly into the page, and the right side of my screen is the Rome page where I'll be typing up my findings in an organized manner, and you can see my entire system on there, and you can also see my reference source on the left side of the video, which shows me scrolling through the articles that I'm using and gathering information from there. All right, so the way that I'm structuring these notes is I'm going to start off by a general topic. So today, as I said, we're going into environmental chemistry as a whole, and I did say that I'll be looking into COVID, but that will be a small section within this environmental chemistry. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to type the first article name at the top here. So I've included article one and I've included the name of the article and then I'm going to start taking some bullet style notes. So afterwards, I'm gonna come back through and add in some links. So during my note taking process, I'll realize more about what the article is actually about and I've learned that it's actually focused on atmospheric chemistry. So I'm including a link of atmospheric chemistry that I can refer to later on. I'm also going to be adding the name of the person that recommended this article to me, and I'm going to link that as well so that this professor's name is saved into my personal CRM. We're not gonna really dive into that today, but I'm going to be talking about a personal CRM and building a personal system for relationships in a later video within this series. So you can refer to that video later on if you're interested in learning more about that. I'm just going to go through the process of taking bullet point notes with a hierarchical system where I'm able to see the titles of each section of the article and I'm able to refer to that later on as well. You can also see that I'm taking a screenshot of what's on the left side of my screen of a specific graph that I thought might have been especially useful in my notes for me to refer to later on and I'm going to just import that from my downloads folder on my laptop into the actual Rome research page. And Rome research does this really well so that you're able to import media right away. And it's basically a seamless experience, which I've actually really enjoyed. So you'll see me doing this throughout my notes as I'm importing pictures of graphs and tables and anything I might find helpful. So continuing in my note-taking process, you'll see that I've realized that I mentioned the word ozone a lot, which is really a topic that's very popular throughout atmospheric chemistry because ozone is a really important part of the stratosphere. So here you can see me going back through and then adding links for the word ozone, which I know that I'll come across a lot later, so I want to be able to look back at every time I mention the word ozone in any of the articles that I've read in the past. The way that I'm doing this is just highlighting the word ozone in each part where I mention it, and I'm going to just press two open brackets on my keyboard, which will directly make it a link automatically, and I can go back through with taking my notes. 
So I'm just continuing through with my note taking process and you'll see here that I actually do something very special. This is one of the biggest features that I find to be useful with Rome and with a lot of other note taking apps that I've used as well. But Rome does it really nicely in which you're able to press this little triangle on the side of a bullet point and you're able to collapse that entire bullet point basically and all of the information underneath it. So what I'm doing here is just collapsing the graph of different regions of the atmosphere and you can see that that entire section disappears and I'm just able to continue typing my notes and you'll see me do this as well throughout my note taking process so that I don't have too many things cluttering my screen. So here while we're just watching me go through my note taking process you'll see me add a table over here and you'll see me continue this bullet point style of note taking. I'm gonna take a little break here just to explain my philosophy behind note taking in general, and especially in the case of academic research and what I'm doing here, which is basically an extended version of the interests I have outside of class. So basically in terms of this, I'm going with a strictly hierarchical bullet point system. What I mean by that is I'm able to put specific headings and then write key points that I find from each section in an academic journal and I put it underneath that heading and within that I'm able to add excess information inside of that and I really love Rome Research's style of keeping your bullet points really organized. So throughout my note-taking method you'll see that I often scroll up and down on both the article on the left side and also my actual notes on the Rome Research page. And this is because I'm trying to follow along with my ideas and sometimes I like to go back and see if there's anything I missed and add some supplementary information on top of that. So I'm able to follow these gray lines that move straight down the page, which give me a general idea of which bullet point I'm actually underneath. So the thing with the hierarchical system is that I need to be able to follow my thought process going up the screen as well as going down the screen. So this is really helpful for me to be able to track back on my thoughts for a specific topic and then go ahead and add more into that specific bullet point. This will also be really helpful for when I'm going back through my notes again in a few days or weeks or even months so that I'm able to follow my thought process and that's kind of my basic goal on top of all of these notes is that I'm able to reflect on it and then come back to it if I need to in a few years or whenever I need to look back at it for research purposes. So you'll see here that I'm starting on my second article, which is an article based on the environmental effects of COVID-19. And here I'm just going to go ahead and add the date that I'm accessing this information, which you can see I've also added to article one, and now we're on article two, and I'm saying the date that I've accessed it so that I won't have to look through my references to see when exactly I planned it in my daily schedule, but instead I'm able to have an idea of which year I was reading this information and if this information was actually relevant to me at that specific time, so that when I come back and look at it, I'll know if there's more information that has been added or if there's more research that I I need to dig into for that subject. So something that you'll see me doing here is I'm going to directly quote from the article of information because I found that there was a specific sentence that I really loved and I really wanted to include in my notes and I didn't just want to paraphrase it. So here I am just taking that and control C'ing and then control V'ing on my keyboard or copy and pasting directly into my notes. And here I've quoted it as well and you can see that I've included page references throughout my notes for when I'm not actually quoting information. So now for article two, we're just gonna really quickly recap through some of the information that I typed after this, which the only special thing I did here was actually create a link for COVID-19 so that I'm able to go back and refer to that in the future. But other than that, everything is just straight up bullet point notes, which is really basic and something I've mentioned throughout this. So we're just going to go on to the next article now. So in this third article, I'm just following along with the exact same fashion as you've seen earlier, and I think I'm going to start making a article template sort of where I'm able to add if my article was recommended by someone and also the date at which I studied it. And here you can see all three of these were studied on the same date. So they have the same date attributed to all of them. 
This third article is based on atmospheric chemistry in relationship with environmental chemistry, which is why it's under this little branch here. And it's how air pollution threatens brain health, which is actually a really interesting subject to study. Something that I want to mention as we go through this set of notes is that a lot of these names of diseases and things like that are things that are actually important for me, and I might go back and link them in the future if I'm able to find other articles relating to the same subject. You don't see me linking anything here because I don't have very many links to form yet, but what I want to do is in the future to start a link and then be able to look at the unlinked references in that page that I've created and then after that I will be able to link them and attribute them to those neurological diseases. So that's basically the gist of this article but I want you to stay until the very end of this video because I do something really important at the end which I think is something that some of you might find very valuable. Here I've closed the article but something that I noticed while going through the second and third articles is that I found PM to be a very important subject which stands for particulate matter and within environmental chemistry and environmental science in general this is something that comes up a lot. So I decided that I would create a link for it so that in the future when I'm studying it again whether that's in a class or whether that's through my extra research, I'll be able to link all of these ideas together. So now the main thing I wanted to mention in this video is my final conclusion section of my notes. Here in Rome Research, I'm going to create a link called Final Thoughts, and I'm going to add that for each of the articles that I'm doing research on, or even each of the articles that I'm reading in daily life, or from a book, or really from anything I listen to in a podcast or watch in a video from all of the information I'm taking in throughout the day. I think that a final thoughts section of your notes is extremely important because you want to be able to know what exactly you took away from reading that article and how much time you put into it. So at the end of the day, I wanna take a second and think back and reflect on what I've learned in an article so that I'm able to summarize that. And if I need to come back to the article later on, I'm able to see the final thoughts I had. In this section, you can also include any questions you're left over with or any new ideas you have for extension research even on top of this. This is something that I find to be really important and I think everybody should know how to expand their thoughts in terms of expanding your research in other subjects as well when you're looking back at your notes. So that's it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. In my next Rome Research Series video, I'm hoping to do a video on a personal CRM. As I mentioned a little bit earlier in this video, it's going to be basically a relationship management system for those of you who can't really remember things that are going on in your life and need a little bit more organization in a digital format. So come back to my channel for next week and please subscribe, like this video and comment if you have any questions. I would love to answer those for you. And if you have any suggestions for me, please leave those down in the comments below. I'm always trying to learn new ways to expand my knowledge base. Thanks so much for watching guys. See you soon.